All right, next up, the Auburn Tigers. We may see this differently. I don't We're going to see this a lot differently because but you hate this team. That's not necessarily – well, okay, that is true. But, uh, yeah, let's let's just give the – the tail of the tape. Eight and five last year, three and five in conference. Returning starters, they've got six on offense, seven on defense. Experience wise, number 58 in the country uh, in returning experience, number six in the conference. Their over under is eight. The over is minus 130. The under is plus 110. That means Vegas thinks it's more likely they hit nine than seven wins. The quarterback is down to redshirt freshman Joey Gatewood or true freshman Bo Nix. Um, Gus Malzahn. 53 and 27 in six years as the head coach. He is back to calling plays. He hired Memphis offensive coordinator Kenny Dillingham to kind of step in and help help run more up tempo kind of stuff. Uh, Kenny Dillingham will not be calling plays. That'll be no. Gus's job. But as far as creating a game plan, obviously Dillingham was around Mike Norvell. You know that's that's a good thing, right? Um, look, like I said, quarterback down to a redshirt freshman and a freshman, neither of which has taken a college snap. Uh, all five offensive linemen return, but they were inconsistent at best. Uh, running back Booby Whitlow, he he could absolutely be a star. He can be a star. Uh, defensive line is legit, uh, probably one of the best in the conference, if not the nation. Uh, I don't know about the best in the nation. Like I, I don't know who. No, would maybe not that. number one, but they're but, in the conversation. Yeah, they're they're in the conversation for that. The entire secondary is back for the number fourteen scoring defense. They do lose all three linebackers. Uh, how much depth does this team actually have? They play six of the top 13 teams in the just recently released uh, coaches poll. With the school president gone, maybe Malzahn does not have that security blanket that he had before, and that could be an issue. This schedule is really, really difficult. I've got them at 7-5. and five. I've got them 4-4 four and four in the conference, but I've got them losing to Oregon, uh, Oregon returns a lot of experience. Like they're, I think they're number one in the country, aren't they? Yeah, they're they're um, up there. Or they're, 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 they're not they're number top one. ten. Yeah, they're really um, high. And they return a senior quarterback. They got like all this different stuff. But who was supposed to be a top five NFL draft pick? Um, now he was hurt for a portion of last season. But either way, I've got him losing to Oregon because you got a guy coming in taking his first college snaps against a team that I think is going to be pretty good in yeah. Oregon. Uh, a win over Tulane, a win over Kent State, kind of turns things around. Then you go to Texas A&M. And I've got them losing to Texas A&M, but then I've got them beating Mississippi State at home and then a win at Florida, right? So even if they beat Texas A&M, I could totally see them losing to either State or Florida, right? So that's another loss. I've got a win at Arkansas, but then I've got them losing to LSU. Like, that's on the road. That's in Baton Rouge. I think LSU gets them again this year. A win over Ole Miss, and then I've got them losing... To Georgia, beating Samford and a loss to Alabama, and both of those are at home, and they could absolutely turn things around if they've got some momentum. They could win those games, but at Auburn, if you have already lost like three games by the time you get to that point in the season, and the other team's got more to play for, yeah, sometimes the crowd isn't as into those games. So I've got them seven and five, four and four. What uh, what have you got, Auburn? I got them ten and two, and I just we just disagree. We just disagree that's, that's... for the guy who has given home field advantage. An extreme plus all the way through all 125 teams that we've done so far. Here, you take home field advantage, just throw it away. Just say it doesn't matter. Just doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, but we're talking about Georgia and Alabama. Like, I'm not. These are two teams that they beat all the time. Just because they're really good teams doesn't mean that Georgia, that Auburn just loses these teams, loses these games. Two years ago okay. at home, they beat the hell out of Georgia. Controlled every aspect of the Agreed. game from start to finish. Kirby Smart folds like a cheap suit every time a little bit of heat hits his bottom. Yeah. Like, why do we think that's going to change? Because I don't think this team is as good as that team was. I don't know that, I don't know that they have to be. I, I, I have them winning against Oregon because while I think Oregon is a really good team, really good, I think Oregon is still have a little bit of ways to go. I think SEC talent is still a thing. I, okay. I think the yeah. fourth or fifth best team in the SEC is a lot better than the best team in the Pac-12. I could be wrong, and it could just be complete bias. You're one of these guys where I got to see it before I rank it. If it's any other big SEC team, you give them the win because 
you know that SEC talent is just better. And while you might be average in the SEC, you're still better than most of the other teams in the country. I, okay, I, so no, here's the deal, though. But you know that's true. You no, know I, that I'm, you know that it's absolutely true. If this was Florida playing them, you would have Florida having that nod, and you'd use that as over Oregon. Argument. Yes. I, see, yeah. I don't think so. Remember, I've got Oregon going eleven and one this year. I know you do. Like, I think Oregon's going to be really, really good. They've got a, a a really good quarterback and a whole wealth of really good experience. And I know Mario Cristobal is a tough. Tough coach. He understands how to coach in the SEC. That offense is good at Oregon. That offense won't play a defensive line that is going to beat them up physically early. And that here's the deal. Because they you know they that. won't have to put up a ton of points to be able to win this game because I don't think that Auburn's offense look, I've already talked about the, the quarterbacks. But the skill it, it players is, it is very other strange than Booby Whitlow that that high ranked quarterbacks don't start. We have we see freshmen come into this league all the time, all the time, and take over teams and do really well if they're highly recruited. At one point in time, Fromm was a freshman quarterback, and he took a job from the number one quarterback in the SEC at that time. It, he it, Jacob Eason was never the number one quarterback in the SEC. Who was that year? But because uh, it was just two years ago. Uh, man, I have no idea. It, it, it wasn't I mean, Jalen Hurd. Well, Jalen Hurts was the offensive player of the year in 2016. I, I understand um, that. That's because. But Jacob Eason because was not. Like, did. Jacob Eason's only year starting was he went like eight and five, like in his first year. But what I'm saying like, is we see, and we saw him come in his freshman year. We see freshmen take over teams all the time. I, and, with we, you. and we never question them. We just assume this, especially with a, an offensive minded coach. That's gonna coach the quarterback too. Like this is what he does. Like the fact that these guys have never <laughs> taken a snap, you just work under something. They're just gonna be. They're just gonna be awful. And they're not I'm gonna. Not they're, they're not gonna, gonna be, be good at all. I'm not saying he's gonna be awful. They've got I'm all the potentials to be really good. They are playing six top thirteen teams, I, and, and they play right. the number one and the number three teams at home late in the season. But those teams are one and like, three today. I, I'm, things are one and three today. I understand. So if that. they if they win if they go one and one in that if they go one and one in that then I'm then I'm down to what nine and three. Well, at that point, for me, you would be eight and four. So, but if if they beat Oregon, that puts them at nine and three. But then you've got at Texas A and M at LSU. I don't so think what, they win those games. Who, what what? Because losses? Auburn hasn't Auburn doesn't travel well. They that their road games are when they get beat. So you think they beat Georgia and Alabama? I, that's why I have it right now because okay. I don't think they're scared of those teams. But here's the thing: this this is one of those things where I I make a schedule, okay, and I'm just picking a game. I think they're gonna finish ten and two. I think if they go one and one there, they're gonna go one and one somewhere else. Okay, no, I'm, okay. That okay. means that means that they could easily win one of those LSU A and M games. Okay, that may, I mean that makes sense. But that makes sense. If they finish nine and three, would I be surprised? No. If they finish seven and five, I'd be completely surprised. There's just no way that's happening. If they're over under is eight, you'd yes, be surprised at, I do. at seven and five. That's why I think it's going over. I I get to bet okay. these things. I see it different than Vegas. You're you're a you are a believer in Gus Malzahn. In Gus Malzahn I and am, his play I, calling. I believe but but I believe in him even when he was I think he's a good head coach. Okay. I do think that Auburn fans and their their administration has unrealistic expectations all the time. Tell me this. Tell me this. Even with as much money as is left on his contract, if they are seven and five after the season, he doesn't survive. Okay. I, here's the thing. I don't know that that's an issue. I think he calls his agent. I think he finds him another job and he just leaves. Okay. I can see well, that. Well, no, that's not true. He's got too much money on the table. He gonna make him fire him. Yeah. That's. I, I, I apologize. You don't ever leave that much money aside. I don't care what the situation is. No. It, it's all guaranteed money, but so I don't think that's I don't think that's happening. I do think that Auburn is getting a little more realistic at times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're I'm coming. Maybe the reason their athletic department, or the, the president, is gone is because unrealistic expectations. Because when you have unrealistic expectations, you I can't even talk right now. I don't, I don't think that's why the president's. Gone. But but when you but but what I'm saying is is when those things happen. You have inconsistencies. You have teams where you're competing for national championships, and then the next year you're eight and four. Yeah. And then you're doing this and you're doing this because there's no consistency. And I think at some point in time, people have to realize that while what Nick Saban has done and what Dabo Sweeney has done is amazing, 
It is not your God-given birthright to win 10, 11 games every year and to compete for a national championship. So if you do it every two or three years, the fan base should be ecstatic and get the hell over the other years. It's part of building a program with 18 and 19-year-old kids. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay. Okay. I think they're 10 and 2. I think they're really good, and I believe in Gus Malzahn. I could be wrong. And you're right. The fact that I think they're going to, I know we've got to get over this, but the fact that I think they're going to beat Georgia and Alabama, probably not going to happen. It's just the way I wrote it on their sheet. They go into Baton Rouge and beat the hell out of LSU. I, you know, it could happen. But the homer in me says that ain't happening. So I move on. There you go. And we will move on. <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's all good. We, we're three teams in and we're already on 30 minutes here. <laughs> Well, this was going to be a big one. This is a big I, one. I told this you to get through the one. intro fast. 